My name is Jelani Nelson. I'm an assistant professor of computer science here at Harvard University. Um, I work in uh, algorithms generally and theoretical, which is within theoretical computer science. And I tend to work on algorithms for very large problems, like large data sets, as well as high dimensional data sets. Uh, so some of these areas are called streaming algorithms, for example. You make one pass over a lot of data and uh, you want to process that data using very little memory. You can't remember everything you saw. Uh, another one is dimensionality reduction. So there are a lot of applications where your data is kind of naturally represented as you know, a set of high dimensional vectors and algorithms for processing that data have run times which um, increase as the dimension is larger. And uh, these are methods to, dimensionality reduction methods are, as the name suggests, methods to reduce the dimensionality such that if you solve the new lower dimensional problem, the solution you get for that problem will still be a good solution to the original problem. Um, and, and other things related to kind of these two topics. So I'm, uh, I'm speaking, I think, Wednesday at 4.30 on dimensionality reduction via sparse matrices. Um, so I mentioned this dimensionality reduction topic. So an example there, so in machine learning, for example, um, you know, there are lots of applications where uh, corporations or whoever uh, are collecting lots and lots of data about people. Um, so for example, uh, you know, Amazon, they might keep track of how you rated various products, what products you buy, what, you know, they, they can keep track of lots of things, uh, things that might not even clearly be uh, relevant, but why not store them since uh, storage is cheap? You know, what kind of browser did you use when you visited my site? What time of day do you usually visit my site? Just lots and lots of features of the, of the customers. They kind of, um, these features lead to representing customers as these high dimensional vectors. Uh, and now you want to do various learning tasks. You want to predict, for example, uh, what might this user buy next, or this product that they just bought, when is the next time they're going to reorder the same product? Maybe some cologne or perfume that you know they're probably going to order in the future, when are they going to do it? So there are all these predictions, uh, prediction tasks, and there are algorithms that solve these that take in these high dimensional vectors as input. Um, and the goal is to make those learning algorithms faster. Okay, so um, here's one one application. So there's a paper by some folks at Yahoo Research, uh, I guess in 09, and they were training a spam classifier, right? So uh, you maybe you use Gmail or Yahoo Mail or whatever other mail client you use, you know, service you use. Um, you know, those things automatically label some things as spam for you. And you know, you want you want that thing to catch the real spam and hopefully not mislabel things that aren't spam, right? So you want to get a good spam classifier and there are learning algorithms that do that. They take as input lots of emails that they have stored and then try and learn the classification, which ones are spam, which aren't, so that for the future they can figure out uh, methods to classify future emails. And you know, one way that's typical of representing uh, emails is this what they call a bag of words model where you treat any document, let's say an email, a web page, any document that contains text, you treat it as a really high dimensional vector where the number of dimensions is the size of your dictionary, the number of possible words. And uh, let's say the an entry in that vector is how many times did that word appear in my document, maybe weighted by the importance of the word, so you would down weight something like the and given lots of these high dimensional vectors, these emails, right, you have some learning tasks that you now want to do. Um, but if you notice in this example, most of these high dimensional vectors are gonna be very sparse, right? Because when someone writes an email, um, they're not gonna include every word in the dictionary in their email. So most of, the, most of the entries are gonna be zero. So you have these really high dimensional, but also really sparse vectors, and you wanna do learning on those kinds of vectors. Um, and how do you do dimensionality reduction, the thing I mentioned before, efficiently for sparse inputs like this? So the talk is going to be about, about that problem. Not, not specifically email and spam classification, but how do you do dimensionality reduction on sparse data? Something that's both ex uh, ex 
exciting and a challenge is, you know, as you mentioned, the fact that there are so many disciplines that are that are attacking problems in this domain. And you know, when you what that means is that if you're doing research on some of these problems, you have to understand multiple uh, viewpoints of the same problem. You know, understand from the statistical perspective what do people there want. Understand from the algorithms perspective. That's so I'm I'm an algorithmist. Um, you know, which means make the algorithms go fast. And you should make sure that the algorithms that you're developing that go fast solve the problems that you know the people in that domain and stat and statistics or whatever actually uh, appreciate your solution. So um, I think that's both exciting and and uh, challenging.